All right. Welcome back to Two Stupid Guys Trade Stocks. I'm Vinny. I'm Dylan. Today we're going to talk about how, uh, I don't know if you guys have seen the news headline, there was this uh, California oil spill, and uh, Michael Burry put out a tweet saying that uh, this is Jerome Powell's fault. <laughs> Pretty weird, huh? There's an oil spill and it says Jerome Powell's fault? Yeah. The, yeah, yeah, the chairman of the Federal Reserve is out there just pouring gallons of oil into the Pacific Ocean right now as we speak. All right. Well, yeah. if you like this kind of entertaining stock content, we are uh, two stupid guys trade stocks trying to figure everything out. Just two average guys. So if you like us, give us a like and subscribe. Two stupid guys trade stocks. I mean, when he does the glasses pull down, Jerome Powell looks pretty ominous here. I'm not going to lie. I, I agree with you. Yeah, I'm he's... waiting to see how this connects. Yeah, yeah that's, that's, it's a twisted little tale. So this is the actual tweet that Monkey Blurry put out. Um, it's in the Federal Reserve by insisting inflation is transitory, freezes companies from offering much higher wages that may become permanent, thereby creating inflation through shortages, worker shortages, union strife, and now creating an oil spill. Creating, I agree with the first eighty percent. Yeah, but yeah. So he, I, I want to walk through a little bit about like what's going on and like where this comes from. This, this actual uh, whole snippet here from the Bloomberg article I put on a separate slide here. Uh, but this is basically the headline. There is port congestion maybe blamed for California's oil spill, which is kind of funny because like wait, I first heard about this oil spill and you know you're like oh you know were they maintaining their stuff properly? Da da da. Uh, but it's kind of quickly like people have left it alone, right? And this is, this is why, as we've kind of gotten out there and, and you know inspected the pipeline a little bit, basically they found that uh, the pipeline was dragged 105 feet from its original location. And they found a 13-inch split in it. Yeah. <laughs> There's like apparently a, a concrete covering that goes over the pipeline, and it was like knocked off. Uh, and then the whole pipeline was dragged over 100 feet. Oh, my gosh. All right. Well, yeah. We're gonna what on earth? Yeah. So do you remember seeing pictures like this? Yeah. Talking about port congestion? Oh, yeah. I just, okay. That makes sense. Yeah. Where do you think it happened? Wait. Oh, here? <laughs> Basically. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, no. That yep. was really this, bad. Yeah. Th this is this is a relatively recent picture. Uh, this is, I if you know, Washington Post, I think, posted this, but all the ships waiting to be you know unloaded here at the port of Los Angeles. And uh, this is where the oil spill occurred. The, those two orange blobs right here are actually the, uh, the oil fields that were detected and the red line here is the pipeline. Oh, wow. That, that one of the orange blobs is really far away from the oil. That means it's a lot worse than. Uh, so they, they had some estimates in terms of how much they think they put it out. It was 144,000 gallons of crude oil estimated to have leaked. Um, so far they had identified over 35 animals covered in oil. I don't know what they classified as an animal. Because I don't know, but uh, sure. then ten of them were, were dead, unfortunately. Uh, and then they actually declared a state of emergency in Orange County where this occurred uh, in order to help with the cleanup efforts. So this right. is where you kind of like get the little backstory, I guess, a little bit in terms of uh, tying the the, the pipeline, uh, you know, leak to like shipping a little bit. Uh, but they're actually basically saying that the. This, uh, this gentleman here, this uh, Neubauer, is like, I'm convinced the initial event was uh, the flecked of the pipe was an anchor strike. And based on the 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 kind of sea life that they found growing on the concrete uh, around that area where it was struck by the anchor, uh, they said it happened in the last months to a year. So it, this is a relatively recent thing that had occurred. Wait, that's like a giant gap. Month to a year? Months to a year. Th th oh, there was geez. enough time that... Uh, you know, sea life had, had moved in and started living on there. I don't know, based on their timeline, if it was, you know, coral or you know, algae or what. I have no idea what, what the actual animal was. Uh, but they are able to determine that, you know, this is an old damage from years ago. This has happened, you know, during the pandemic era yeah. when we had all these ships to stack. Definitely from all the harbor. ships. Yeah. That's basically what the what, what they were able to, you know, not, you know, nail down from the timeline. I'm not sure if this counts as an animal or not. Um, this kind of reminds me of uh, one of Dylan's, like, ex-girlfriends. Uh, but that's an entirely separate story. <laughs> oh my God, you're ridiculous! You were wait, you were waiting for that too. I, I was. Also, I, I put that slide in here just to make that joke. Yeah, you're you're gonna get so much hate for for the saying. I'm not sure if this counts as an animal. I'm just waiting for it. Oh yeah, I mean that depends, I guess, right? Hey, I was a biology major in undergrad. Okay, <laughs> so was I. You're not getting out of this. <laughs> Uh, but this is talking a little bit more about how the, the cargo backup and like kind of what's what's causing all this cargo backup. Um, they talk about how the fact that, you know, 
there's so many groups involved in, in unloading these ships and there's a, a lot of miscommunication and kind of poor coordination between them. There's some government regulations, like, I don't know if you know this, but truck drivers can only be on the clock for like 14 hours a day and 11 hours maximum driving. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, trucking shortage of being able to get stuff off the, off the actual port. Um, warehouses throughout the entire Western United States are just like slammed full of stuff. Um, the entire Western U.S. has less than 3% capacity basically right now for um, warehouse storage of, of goods. They say that they estimate that warehouses in, in the U.S. and the Western side of the country are about 25% smaller than they should be based on the amount of cargo that's coming into the United States right now. Oh, jeez. Yeah. I know. We should look at some warehouse REITs. What do you think? Yeah. I mean, I don't, or we just need to buy more things. Yeah. Why? You know, uh, there was another, uh, while researching this, it was an interesting article talking about how uh, uh, plastic fake Christmas trees are up 25% like uh, so far this year. I actually did see that. Yeah. yeah I mean, that they're, yeah. It's better than the S&P 500, better than my portfolio. Yeah. <laughs> I believe you. Should have invested in Christmas trees. <laughs> Uh, but just, you know, this is a gentleman from uh, Happy Lloyd, which is one of the world's largest shipping companies, talking about how in other countries, they've been able to basically go to 24-7 operations. Uh, however, in the United States, it's not the case because there's a lot of different uh, parties at play here uh, that are uh, powerful. I don't want to like they come off as like anti-union, but uh, certainly the union has had some issues there. Uh, there's also like uh, kind of off peak rates where if you want to ship unloaded at a certain time of day, uh, they're actually paying 50% more. Uh, and they, you know, per the union that, that they've been underutilizing that, which you know, rightfully so, right? I guess 50% uh, premium yeah. for, for working at a certain time That's is kind of crazy, but a lot. And uh, all the ports in the US are still closed on Sundays, you know, the, back to our, uh, uh, I guess, the religious day. Really? Yeah, apparently they just, no no ports work in the United States and, on Sundays. <laughs> oh, gosh. yeah. Um, but uh, you know that, that's a large portion of what's going on here in this particular country and why you know we're getting hit pretty hard with this, these backups. Um, you know, <laughs> this is another interesting thing too: is, is people know that inflation is occurring, and this is and consumers are responding to that, right? It's it's been in the mainstream media. Uh, so this is another tweet by Burry here. He's talking about people, um, you know, shopping for Christmas even earlier this year, uh, which is certainly part of the trend there, I guess. It, it, you know, given the uh, delays in um, you know obtaining goods, it, it makes sense that people would want to be. Uh, shopping a little bit earlier, so this is likely to continue to be a um, what's the word? like a catalyst, basically, or demand upon port uh, shipping. I will, I will say, I so I, I just bought a, a new home, and uh, the shipping time for fridges are six weeks. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's actually better than I expected. Great. Yeah, I think it's terrible. I'm used. I want it tomorrow. Yeah, I just I want mean, to press a button, just like Amazon. Yeah, there, there's the shortage of everything and the skilled labor too. Like I just hired a tile guy to redo my my shower, and he's like, "Yeah, I'm like two months out minimum on work right now." Oh, jeez. Yeah. And I, just to clarify, that's for the fridges that are available. Mm -hmm. There's like there's half of the things we click on when we're like, "All right, the dimensions fit," out of stock. Yeah, just all of them. I mean. Completely fascinating. There, I mean, there's so many different ways you can look at this. Like, did you, did you watch Tesla's uh, annual meeting this year, this week? Uh, no. No. Wait, uh, so, I saw highlights of it. Yeah, but like the, the main point there is that Tesla is not immune to chip shortage, and now they're having to delay stuff even further. Where you're talking about that, that's you know, that's not the point of this video, but the the uh, the Tesla pickup truck being now into like 2023 before you actually see some like real delivery numbers. So which this is uh, un unfortunate. Which which actually means 2024, 2025. Yeah, and like, can you imagine the, the the egg on Elon Musk's face when, when Ford comes out with their Lightning next year and they can actually ship them? Oh, I, I thought they were going to get delayed too. No? Uh, they're, they're supposed to be spring of next year shipping in volume, I want to say, is what their last estimate was. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. All right, guys. So let us know what you think is about, you know, did uh, Jerome Powell and his, uh, you know, kind of – reluctance to admit that inflation was here to stay contribute to things like this oil spill as a result of all these shipping delays i think know. only burry would put that together yeah like I know, nine right? steps in between that yeah exactly. <laughs> i feel like i was playing a game of clue a little bit <laughs> trying to research everything all right yeah. thanks a lot guys all right we'll catch you guys in the next one